And this week, um, it starts to slow down. We went through quite a few samples last time. And like I just said, um, we'll get those up on uh, the YouTube up so you can see it and uh, follow along a, um, at, at your leisure. Um, this week, we're working with a few different materials, and one of them is cardboard. And um, I just found this really, you know, any of these simple things, it, at this time, it takes your mind off it. You don't have to struggle to think. And what I've been working with a lot uh, in doing these samples is I have been pushing my color, um, color knowledge. And I really am enjoying color right now anyway. So um, it's really been fun for me. And for me to say that, um, I just find that I'm not, I, you know, I'm not really a painter. And um, I'm not really um, a 2D person, but there's a lot of three-dimensional depth to this that you create two-dimensionally. So with that, um, today we're working with cardboard, and uh, we are, I got bit, I just, in waiting, I just cut all my cardboard, but uh, you'll see in the um, directions when I send it to you, I don't know if you can see that, um, you take your X-Acto knife, and you just cut through that first layer of cardboard and pull that off. And you can do designs, which I've done these circles. Well, I can't get my fingernail under there. Okay. And just rip that off in different ways. Um, you can also, so that's, I did it around a circle. Uh, this was just a common, kind of a combination of designs. And these are some that I've already painted, but I just went ahead and some of them I just, which ones? Oh, I just ripped the cardboard or the top layer, just ripped it any old which way. Um, so you can have a lot of fun doing different, this is another kind of or any old which way. You can have a lot of fun just ripping paper. And these are finished, so uh, working in that green and blue palette, what we're gonna do with these, this is your homework, is to go ahead and put these into, just use these, you can cut them off, whatever you wanna do with them, and use some of these to create a, a um, collage, a mixed media piece. So uh, that'll be fun, and I'm going to work on that for homework too. So today, um, you cut four, you cut eight pieces of cardboard, and I just used um, boxes. Apparently, this was Bree's box, so there's Bree, and um, cutting those different shapes into it. And the directions that I've written out for you, four of them, four pieces of cardboard. You go ahead and add the gesso and let that dry. And then four pieces, we don't do anything to, we just paint. So I've already kind of started in with the, like to say with the gesso, and it, it does make a difference. And uh, it's fun to play with the, the way that the paints perform on the gesso as well as on just the plain cardboard. So starting off these two pieces, um, we, we're working with dark and light. So this was my dark and uh, painting one light. And then we're gonna come on top of these and do the opposite. And we're going to dry brush. And it's just what it sounds like if you haven't worked with um, paints before. Dry brush is just, you don't wet your brush first. This is kind of a funky brush, so he's got a little wild hair. So I'm going to just do it with some uh, of this light acrylic paint. And I'm just going to come across the top. This is not quite dry, but you can see it kind of picks up the, the textures. And you see you start to develop that, which... Um, you people, you people, you, you ladies probably all know, uh, you know how that performs light over dark and dark over light. But it certainly gives it an interesting character and any which way you turn it, it's got a little more interest to it than, um, than it had before. And then we'll play.
play with um, this one's not quite dry, uh, dry, but we'll add dark over the dry brush over the top. And then we'll do the same, we'll go through the same thing with the gesso pieces. And um, we'll work with a couple of a couple of full strength and then a couple of washes over the top. So it just to see how those inks well, an ink wash and an acrylic wash to see how the difference is and uh, how that performs and which you like. Sometimes it's fun to, just to see, remind yourself which things you really are, um, is your favorite to do. So I, I enjoy working with the cardboard and I'm going to, like I say, I'm going to make my piece uh, and have it for next time. So I'm going to put my wet cardboards. Anybody have any questions on that? Um, that just, just to start to give us an idea of texture. Uh, it, it is raised texture, but still that two-dimensional idea. Um, so you can see on these pieces, this is light over dark. You see that? So Betsy, is any of this mixed paint with with the gesso? Um, like we did last week? No, okay. no, we're not mixing this time. We're using them as separate uh, separate components. That's okay. right. Thanks. Yeah, and uh, you know, just it sucks in it sucks into the paint, of course. I mean, into the cardboard, of course, which is different if you don't use the gesso. Um, and then also with the gesso, this, this one's gesso, it gives it a little more strength, but it also gives it a little more, uh, a, a different depth of color. And so I found that was interesting. I couldn't stop over painting though. I painted everything over. This is without, this is just kind of washed. So I let it kind of do the, just hit the tops. And from different angles, it's kind of fun to get a little difference with the, just the brown of the cardboard. So that's those cardboard pieces. And then uh, what now we're going to do something really fun. I like this one too. I like all of them this time. Uh, this time we're going to work with some natural materials. And so this one. I, I really kind of salvaged this box. It was on the fold. This one is done. I'm going to hit the light. This one is done with um, seeds. You put a layer of um, gel medium down, and then we're going to put some seeds on it. And then I put a layer of gesso over the top, let all that dry, then acrylic paint. And then I put a wash of ink over it. And I, I'm going to take a picture of these and put them in that padlet so you can see them better. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, this one I played around with. Not sure it's my favorite, but it's feathers. Some turkey feathers I found. And it's the same thing. You, you put gel medium down, put your feathers, then put some gesso over. And then I used uh, some washes to to colorize it, just playing, giving it some interesting texture. And this I uh, just, here's one of those pieces of paper we did last time, and I used it to put some grass seed heads, and then I just used gel medium over the top so you can still see those seed heads very clearly, which gives it a whole other look. So this time I brought in, um, quite a few different things to play with. And gosh, I wish you all were here so we could play. I just have to say that. Well, I'll only say that one time, but I, miss, I do miss having everybody here. So the gel medium, um, as you recall, is, uh, well, the matte medium is dries clear, and I'm just gonna put a layer on. Uh, I, I have a mixture here of cardboard, um, the chipboard, and some, this is an old file folder. I like something a little bit stiffer uh, for these things that have more, uh, well, 
objects and what whatnot because it seems like it holds up a little better than the watercolor paper. Um, but I suppose it depends on how you apply it. So that's a kind of a nice layer. I went. I have some special sand. Ah! A flower fell on the paint. Um, I have some special sand that I collected from Nebraska. So this is really special sand, and. I'm just going to put some sand on here and kind of uh, an all-over look. Actually, there's probably a little dirt in there, too. I was in the sand hills. I figured it was a good time to get some sand. Put all that sand in there. So after this dries, then I'll go over it with um, some more, another layer of gesso I could and work with the paints in different ways. And I list the several different ways of applying the paint, maybe the, with the dark layer and then the light highlighting the higher places, like, well, this one I worked kind of, the copper is kind of the, the light. And then I did a wash with a darker purple, which is kind of hard to see, but it, it pops it out in a different way. So there's my sand. And then I had some interesting, um, now I got sand everywhere. So now we're going to do another layer and I'm going to add some herbs that I've had. Dry, I'm drawing new herbs. So these are last year's or the year before. I don't really need need them quite that old. Um, I had some rosemary that I thought would be a, a fun, leafy look. But I'm going to maybe kind of crumble the leaves off and maybe, maybe throw a, maybe just throw a stick on there. Why not? It'll, it'll stick in there and dry. Haha, uh -huh, the stick will stick in. That isn't too redundant. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more up here so I can put another. I kind of like that. Versus just the, maybe I'll throw a couple more leaves. I thought it was going to just like the leaves, but I kind of like the whole effect of. And then when you gesso over it, you're going to kind of um, fill in those gaps so it's not quite it's not it won't break off which is nice it makes it strengthens the, the leaves too and then I'm going to do uh, I've got some other things to do uh, there's lots to find right now lots of interesting things outside that could be used I dropped my flower in the paint but I was going to put this I dried this zinnia which is not all that exciting but I thought it would make a nice texture. So I snipped off the stem and I'm going to kind of spread it out a little. And, oopsie, it's falling apart now. Okay, and then I'm just going to go ahead and put the matte medium down here, kind of thick, because I want to really adhere this. So I kind of, I, I just really dabbled it on there, but then I want to put this and kind of press it in there so it starts to adhere. And then each layer that I add to it will add more, make it more secure. Uh, actually, I'm going to move it a little bit. So I've basically created a nice focal point here. Maybe it goes that way. A big, big focal point. So different things you can do with different types of materials, which is often, you know, that's just a fun thing to go out the yard and look at things and, and think about them in a whole new way. Uh, well, as artists, we are kind of always doing that, but how might I use that? Uh, the dry would work better just because it doesn't then have to dry again in the, it might, the moisture might get trapped in. So I would recommend drying any your objects first. But that's about the only 
Um, gosh, I don't even remember. This is pretty cool stuff, too. Um, but that's about the only uh, restriction you have on that. And some of these good weather to go out and gather a few things and do a little drawing. So we're going to put that aside. That's number two. I'm just going to rinse that gesso out. There's that. That's pretty fine sand. You can't really, not, there's only a few chunks in that. Very fine sand. So that's going to make a nice, I want. I think I want to put just one layer and let it, so it don't, doesn't disappear. I don't want it to completely disappear. Like, uh, like these seeds, I like that these seeds and I'm not, I don't really remember what that was, but I like how these seeds still have some depth to them, physically. So it's not just a, a look, it's, a, it's an actual texture. Okay, so today is going to go pretty fast. Um, I didn't plan quite as much. And we can talk about things afterwards and uh, see where, where you are and what you would like to what you would like to talk about in this, so that what might help you with your work. Uh, the, one of the other ones today is fabric. This will, this will get you excited, Audrey. Um, so fabric. Uh, these are some samples I made. This one was a, an organza. And I... Uh, use the gel medium to adhere the organza to the chipboard and then I just used a little bit of the um, gesso you can see the light areas maybe and so just a little bit of gesso and then I um, did a wash of um, paint over the top of that and you know all of these samples here it leaves room and spaces to come on for other things uh, we're doing it very spontaneously which is fun and also uh, sometimes you just need to let loose and do some things that are spontaneous um, but looking back and thinking about what you might do with something I mean if we look at it this way now we have kind of a, a maybe a sea or some mountains and here's kind of a moon or a sun in the clouds, so we could use um, this as part of a scene. Um, this is good old burlap. I don't know if you can, it's pretty dark. Can you see that texture? Pretty strong. Uh, it takes a lot to get rid of the texture of this coarse burlap. Um, I adhered it with the uh, gel medium, the matte medium, and then I just did a wash over the top, and boy, it sucked it up. So it still has a brown kind of quality to it. Um, I mean, it, this is one I'm going to go over the top with a, a highlight of a lighter color. And then, uh, like we did with the tissue paper, this I did, took my, um, some silk and just kind of wrinkled it into the gel, gel medium and did the gel medium over the top to secure it all down. So that's a nice surface, interesting surface to work with. And then this piece, I did sort of a combination of things. I, I have the burlap, of course, and this is something else back here, uh, like a, just a cotton fabric. And then I used the pinking shears. It's kind of hard to see, but I used pinking shears. I didn't have any ribbon or anything, so I used the pinking shears to cut strips. And that'll give me a little bit different texture to paint. So uh, well, another thing I found today, which I thought was great, it's not really fabric, but it is a piece of netting that went around some posts for our new stanchions that we got for the gallery. So kind of like an onion net, but um, pretty fine. So I thought I would put that down too. See if I can adhere that. Um, 
That, that would be, I think that would be a fun texture to work with. And I'm only going to put um, a, a little bit. I'm not going to use, um, not going to cover the whole surface. Just, just to try something. So, yeah, it sticks in there. So there's, there's that. And then I have to let that dry before I do anything more to it. And I had a couple more pieces here. The gel medium is nice and, or I keep saying gel medium, it's matte medium. And it's nice and thin. So the fabric can absorb it really well. And, uh, but I still put it on pretty thick, especially for the heavier or if, like, what I'm going to do now with this um, cotton, I'm just going to use a couple of different strips and wrinkle it all on. I want to kind of gather, start gathering that up on here and scrunching some of that gel in there. And I'm okay if it, if it falls off the edge because if I don't like it, I can always just cut that off. I'm going to add another little strip here just to finish that up. Add interest in this corner. So, so that's the start. And then I want to come over the top and Secure that. So I'm just going to lather on this gel medium and stick that those edges down. Right on that brush. Actually, I might just pour some on here. Just going to soak it up. And every layer that I then add, this might be one I would use the gel meat or the matte. What am I saying? The gesso. I would use the gesso on to as a before I painted it. It's not. It really is taking some soaking it up. So there, it's kind of it's kind of stuck down. That might make a nice surface, but or I might come on top with the gesso and give it a little a little more a smoother, a little bit smoother surface. Um, it takes kind of, with the fabric, it does take a little while to um, adhere and dry. So I'm just going to add a, a few strips of this burlap just to give you a, an idea how that works. And kind of making this one up because. I know that burlap sucks it up too, so I just kind of pull, I just kind of drizzled some on there where I was going to put it, and let it stick, and then do the second piece, kind of get that edge in, and maybe drizzle a little more here. So not an all over, I've got a little bit of space there, but a little bit of background texture to come up with. So this, um, and, and this was the painted one, gives you a, an interesting kind of look to it. And burlap's cheap if you want to play. Burlap is cheap. Uh, I was going to go ahead and paint this piece. Um, and this, let's see, this one I'm just going to wash with an ink. So I'm going to go with uh, a little bit of purple ink. And I'm going to have to mix up a, a nice amount for this because it's going to soak up. It's gonna, even though it's sealed somewhat, it's still going to soak in a little. I'm going to add a little bit of white, just a little bit to lighten it. 
And then, because I can't leave it alone, I want to kind of mute that purple. I'm going to add um, a little bit of orange. See what that does for me. That gives me the color I'm looking for. Oh yeah, that's kind of a nice reddish orange. Still pretty bright, but um, well, apparently I, I like the purple. I just realized I did the other piece purple too. And I needed to add some water to this to make it a wash or I'll never get it all covered. What are you making? Um, I'm working on a piece that has fabric Hailani, piece that has right. fabric adhered to it, and I'm now I'm putting a wash on it. So we're still working on components. This this piece has a little more, um, has a few extra things on it that uh, it could be. It's it's like a collage. It's got a circle, which it, depending on which way you put the circle, um, it could be. Uh, a moon in the clouds or the sun over some waves. Um, I'm just going with an overall wash and then uh, I, I think like I said I, I really love coming back over the top of these colors with a little bit um, light or dark so I might decide to it, because it picks up the highlights. I think that might be a good thing to do with this one, just because I have some, some different textures going on that would be nice to highlight. So you can see how um, the different fabrics perform and the colors. Can you see that? Uh, of course, the burlap already has a brown to it. And the cotton and then the silk, how it, it doesn't quite, um, it's still somewhat um, transparent there. And, but I think that's going to be a fun one to come on top with a, a different color, maybe a silver just over the top of it with the dry brush. That would be good. Okay, so those um, are the fabrics and I have some ideas how to, you know, once you get the fabric on and it's dry, how to, how to paint those, things to try. And always feel free to try other things, um, like I said, this is just, these are experiments to motivate us. Um, in my mind, I might, I think I've got a couple of projects planned, but I might not do a whole, a whole series of mixed media pieces, but these are helping me think about my art in different ways, which, gosh, that's always good. So the last thing I want to show you today is paper, and we talked about this last time, and that's what's fun about um, this workshop is I'll come back and revisit things several times so that we can um, build up more and more layers. And the paper, um, you, you, we can do, of course, some really fun things, and some things that are going to seem familiar. For instance, the tissue paper, and we did this a little bit last time, you can um, scrunch up that tissue paper, layer of gel, uh, gel medium, and then scrunch up your tissue paper. And then this has um, uh, gesso over the top of it already. And that, that's, that gives me a little bit, not completely smooth, but a little bit smoother surface. Another, another way to use the paper, of course, is as a border. So um, I use those fancy scissors and cut myself some strips like ribbon and then apply that, that's the pink, and then apply that with, and did uh, the gesso on top of it. So these are ready to paint. Another idea I talked about a little bit last time, if you have a punch, you can punch things out of the paper and then use the piece that where you punch things out. This one has been adhered, but it's not gessoed yet, which will give me a different look. Um, anything that found papers are good. This just happens to be a map of bird migration. 
And this is just some text from a medieval book. I don't know, I just found it in some scraps I had. So just some found text and a, um, a map. And then this piece is a piece of sort of scrapbooking paper. And I thought it'd be fun to come on top of that with more color and see what, see what I can do just to make it, um, just to enhance it. So some of the things I have done, here's the tissue paper. And this is um, two layers of the same color as a wash. And so sort of how that puddles in uh, and where the depth of the paper is gives it light, a little bit of light and dark, uh, makes, gives it a little more dramatic feel than just one overall color. And this is just one layer, kind of, I don't know if you can see it, these are some pieces I like, cut out of paper and laid down, I've done one coat. I'm gonna come back on top of that with another color so you can see. This is a, just a little, I just use paper, what, what, the cardboard, whatever size it is. So this is a, a piece of a chipboard with little pieces of chipboard glued to the top. They're a little bit thicker, so it's a little more, again, it's a little bit more dramatic. And then this is the chipboard with the thick pieces painted and then uh, dry brushed over the top with a, first a light color or a dark color and then a light color over the top. And it, it makes an interesting effect as you go over those ridges um, and it just sort of pops out those, those raised areas. So what I'm going to do is uh, take this leaf piece where it's just paper. I'm going to see come over the top of that with uh, the light color. I'm going to dry brush it. And I just happen to have my dry brush in here. So I'm going to work over the top of this and just lightly, lightly she says, that's not very light. All right, I also like to work with a cloth. Um, I don't, I kind of like wiping things back. I think this is too thick and I'm gonna add just a little water to make it, after, after it all, I said dry brush, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a wash. I already didn't like that effect. So the little bit thinner, is easier, I think, to control from, I don't know, on this piece it is anyway. And I'm gonna kinda of do an overall layer of this thin. Get you catching all the edges of those little cutouts. And then I'm gonna wipe back over it. And see if that kind of Gives an interesting look. Well, I can see I kind of like some areas. Not really what I was thinking. I'm going to try it again. So it's a try, old try, try again. sure it's done yet, but but I have something to work on. So as I sit here and stare at it, because I could stare at it for a while. You don't want to see, you don't want to watch me staring at a piece of, of in progress. So this one, um, I have some things made up. Just wondering what I should do with it. Maybe the wash of purple over the top would be Let's see what that does. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Now I haven't, this one's just been gessoed to the background. And so nothing, not treated on top. So it's really soaking into this paper. This is very, um, very soft paper. 
it's not got a, a fancy surface to it that keeps it from absorbing moisture, so it's really soaking in. That's kind of fun. Changes the dynamics of that pattern all, quite a bit. So, you know, it's another one of those, what more can you do? Um, if you come on top with a lighter, a lighter dry brush, maybe some swirls would be a good thing. You know, and, and just add another pattern to it. I guess I can do, I can try that. Why not? Let's try that. I like how much paint I have on that. Okay, so maybe some, maybe just some, another design of it on the top. did it wet so it's bleeding into the background a little bit, which is even, you know, that's another interesting effect. So I'm spreading out a little, it's not, it pushes it all back. Okay, so, um, of course, anything we want to do, you know, anything's fair game. Um, we could come on top and do some stamping. It might be it's one of the things this, um, te the text, and I don't know if you can see it, it has little suns up here, little circles. It might be fun to do something with um, a, a circle design. Of course, I don't have any circles. Um, I've got that end of that paintbrush. Maybe that would work. Let's try that. Maybe add some, some dots. That's not thick enough. Maybe add some dots to it. Can be orderly about it or dots then we're like little and then put a wash over the top that might be fun to do um, pattern over pattern pushes that design that text design pushes it to the back so it's not quite as prominent and might just add a little a little water to it to see if now I now I'm this is where I get to start playing um, see if I can get those dots to kind of run maybe maybe see if they'll they'll do something yeah, they're starting to go. And then I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to go over the top of that. Okay, I'm liking it better and better. So now I've added, just changed that up quite a bit to a lot of different layers. I um, like that. I do too. I still think I want one more color, but that's the kind of idea you can just kind of keep, I mean these are just suggestions and you just kind of keep working and um, I could see tearing that up and using that in something else. So questions, that's really about, um, that is all I plan today. Any, any questions about um, what we're doing for this class or your artwork in general or um, 
thoughts, thoughts on what you might like to see more of or, or any of the above. Anybody? Anybody? So, Betsy, last week we were supposed to put some on the chipboards. Uh-huh. Uh, I put gesso, and then what was I supposed to do with that? Put a paint or the, the wash on it? I didn't understand. Okay. Um, I don't have the lesson plan from last time, but there's, there was a combination of things like that. So, uh, the chi oh, the chipboard. I know which one you're talking about. Okay, so we put um, gesso in patterns on the chipboard. Okay. Right? And then um, you could either, let me go back. On the chipboard, you could either put down a layer of paint and then put the gesso and then do a wash over it, over all of it when it's dry. Or you could just do a wash, put the gesso on the chipboard, no previous painting and put a wash. Okay. So it just gives it a different look because the of course the gesso is a bright bright white and that is right. the, it works as that underlayment which is it's fun to it's just showing you kind of how to play with that. So we could do that with the ink or the acrylic paint, the wash? Sure. Okay. All right. Thank sure. you. You're welcome. I did a lot of my uh, painting in yellow on the white. Oh, and good. I mean, look, well, I mean, you didn't see it a whole lot until you put a different color with it, but it worked. And then I put, you know, when you put a different layer of color on it, then the yellow came out and you could see it as opposed to just white on yellow paper. So that was interesting. So, yeah. Yeah, good. So is yellow your color? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get out of that, but that's okay. I, I will get there. Right. Well, and you know, we all have favorites. Yes. So, I tried something um, for next week. I tried something. Um, I like. I like a painter. Um, Bacon is his name, and he uses the most unusual colors. I mean, they're it, it, they're kind of. I don't know. They're not. They're. I almost want to say nauseating together. They're not pleasing. They're jarring together. So I tried a piece, and at first I was like, oh, I don't like that at all. But I achieved what I had wanted. I kind of got a piece that <laughs> wasn't very pleasant. <laughs> the colors are just a little, little odd, so. Okay. So, but yeah, sometimes you just gotta try something else, and see what you can do and and if it's you know if it's really unusual you might you know don't throw anything away you might come back to it you never know so okay. and we're going to tear some things up in the in the uh, as we get going and start working on actually putting it together pieces we'll start cutting and tearing some of these samples that's why i still think the small size is is more doable i i i just personally, I wouldn't make a sample, a big sheet of sample. It just, it would be too much for me. So I'm hoping that you all think this is more, you know, doable. And if it's not what you like, you can keep playing with it. And it's not precious. So that's until it's finished and you like it, then it's precious. <laughs> so. Thank you, Betsy. You're welcome. Thank you all for showing up, and uh, we'll we'll see you again next week. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Mike. Uh huh. Uh huh. Take care. Bye. Bye. Take care.